My name is Rob Wolf, and uh, I actually collect antique motorcycles and uh, actually general antiques. I'm a, I'm a huge advertising guy. I grew up in an era that basically it was a throwaway society, but when I was growing up, my grandparents never threw anything away. So, you know, I try and teach that back into the, ch the kids and my kids, you know, and when I, I'm able to pick a motorcycle or a bicycle or a car or a sign and refurbish that and bring it back to life, it's gonna be here another hundred years. It's no different than an antique motorcycle. To put a bike that you find in a barn and put it back on wheels and then take it across country, there's no better feeling. Antique motorcycling in the United States, you know, people talk about it as, a, a, as an antique. And if you can think about things in the transportation history, things started with the high wheeler, the hard tire safeties. These guys were riding on dirt roads, nothing paved. And then it went into the, basically, let's put an engine on it. Let's see how fast we can go. Let's get into racing. I mean, in America, this stuff, it just doesn't exist anymore. But now, antique bikes in, in the United States, everybody wants them. They want to go back to what they had. For me, I didn't live in the 20s or the 30s, but man, those bikes, the sleekness of them, the, the, the aerodynamics of them, how you sit on that seat, you're only on two springs. These guys were riding across country racing. Think about that. Anybody that's in antiques, um, you know, I always look at it as a small world that we're together. So in the bike industry, I've been doing that for about 30 years. And uh, Rick, I probably met about six, seven years ago. His big barrel laugh it will, is just so contagious to you. You want to meet the guy, you want to talk to him because he has such a passion for what we're doing right now, for what this ride exists for. It's not about, it's not about the money. It's, not, it's just about getting people together and actually doing this and going as a group. It's about friends. And actually, all the friends love to do what we're doing, which is riding these antique bikes. It's feeling that wave, getting the old leathers on, actually doing what these guys did in the 20s and 30s and 40s. We've been doing uh, uh, antiques for probably about uh, five, six years. If anybody that knows Rick's, when he gets his mind in a project, I mean, he goes all out. You know, from his restaurant to his museum, and I think this legacy ride is going to be one of those things too. I think it's going to be a continuation of something that Rick wants to put his hands on and make sure that this, the uh, antique motorcycles exist. Even after he's long gone, the ride's still here, and we're doing it maybe for Rick, not for Lonnie. When you're dealing in antiques, you meet a lot of characters in this world, and those guys that grew up in the 20s and 30s, they had no fear. The stuff that they were riding back then was, there were no brakes on it, you know? There were no stop signs. The roads that they were riding on, how these guys accomplished the things that they did on the racetrack, absolutely amazing. And when you meet one of those guys, you know, the wrecking crew, one of the guys from the wrecking crew lived in Rock Island, and I used to sit down when I was 22 years old and listen to him tell me stories about those guys racing. But those guys, when they tell you the story of what they did, sometimes the crashes that they got into, how they walked away, but they got right back on it the next weekend and did the same thing again. It's, it's not what they're doing today on the asphalt, it's what they're doing back then on the dirt. And those stories stick with you forever. So this ride, that's what this ride means to me. All those guys that it did in the past, I'm gonna do the same thing. I wanna feel that same thing that they did. You know, I, I'm a big true believer in teaching the younger kids that, of today about what we're doing. From this ride to general antiques in, in itself, we have to save this. We have to save all that stuff because once it's gone, it's crunched, it's gone, it's in a landfill, who's gonna tell that story? Who's gonna freaking make that keep going? I've got a 1923 Henderson four cylinder that's gonna be on the ride this year. One of the things that excites me the most about it is I'm gonna be riding with my brother. He's gonna be on, a, on an ace four cylinder. So just to be able to do that, number one, with my friends, but I also get to do something with my brother. The preparation that goes into riding an antique motorcycle across the United States takes, uh, you know, from knowing that the bike itself can run, but now we're riding on roads that have never been ridden on with something like this. So to make sure that bike can stand 165 miles a day, it's pretty, you know, you're, you're, you're chancing it, so to say, but you gotta know how to repair it. The wheels aren't the same, the bearings aren't the same, the tires aren't the same. We're running at speeds on these bikes that, you know, they weren't really meant to run that fast. So it's a, it's a precautionary thing, but at the same time, you know, just checking over the bike, doing it on a daily basis. 
Every day when you land, you got to go back over the bike, make sure everything's good to go. Because if one thing goes wrong, a tire blows, you got something going in your bearings, man, it can be it can be brutal out there. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you're gonna have to have a hard, what I call a leather butt, man, because by the time we finish this ride, your butt is gonna be leather.